granted access right across the Baffa women's competition. Billy Fraser Smith, have your moment. Gets it again. Fraser Smith. There's two. Sheehan picks it up. Can she kick a goal? She snapped it from the boundary. All thanks to Mequacare, a proud partner of the Baffa. Gets around one. Handball over to Joyce. She'll snap again. It's going to go through. Trying to get her hands over it. Got a little bit of a runner on it. Can it get a boot? Does. How do you do? Welcome to Inside the Boundary. Oh my lord. Hello and welcome back to Inside the Boundary, a dedicated look at the Vaffa Women's Competition coming to you every single week. My name is Lucy Watkin and I'm the host of Vaffa Women's Podcast. I'm joined by Sophie Welsh as always, but before we get started, just someone just wanted to thank Mequacare for their support of Inside the Boundary. Mequacare have been around since 1959 and we thank them for their support. You can call them on 1800 163 292 or you can visit mequacare.org.au to see what they can do for you. Thank you to Mequacare for their support. Now to Inside the Boundary with Lucy Walken and Sophie Welsh. Hey. How exciting. We are together in person. We are together in person. Just as at the scene, um, we're in Lucy's room. <laughs> Sitting in my bedroom, relaxing, about to talk some footy. Yeah, just, you know, we just relaxed. We're known for being somewhat relaxed and conversational, so it's pretty fun just to be chatting like we normally, like we used to. Exactly like we used to in our little room in AFL house, but... Oh. Another big weekend of football, so Another big weekend, lose. There is so much happening. I feel like it's kind of hard to keep track, so I guess that's what we're good for. Um, before we get on to Around the Grounds, how are you? How was your weekend? Yeah, good weekend. Um, do you want me to – I don't know if I want to talk about the football game. But... <laughs> <laughs> I did mean in, like, a football context, but, like, personally, you had a good weekend. Personally, I had a really good weekend. Um, football wise, football wise, um, yeah. Sad to lose for the third week in the row, but I think we're getting there. Good. So I think the um, the muggers we're building slowly but surely. You, is it considered like a, an actual rebuild? No, we're not. We don't have. We're not doing an actual rebuild at You're the just moment. A- but I think such is playing for a club that's associated with the university every year it can be a bit transient yes. so we do have players that have been around for a while um like myself who's been there for six years but every year we usually have you know five or six new players mm-hmm. coming through and we've got some really good ones this year but just have to wait and see it takes a while to get that chemistry and that connection 100 percent. it takes a while to build chemistry i mean that's why q and st kevin's and those teams have been so good because they've got a lot of players they've ke- managed to keep those lists together to an extent haven't they Yeah, for a really long time so i think that's something that we're trying to achieve at melbourne uni yeah, yeah so hopefully sure. over the next few weeks we'll be singing the song after one of our games but it's been a tough few weeks but that's it hasn't. okay you know who it hasn't been a tough few weeks for though and Kevin. Oh my oh. god. They won the grand final they rematch. Did. We were kind of, I think you were saying that, um, you know, Q got the better of them at stages throughout last year and they were like the real contender against St. Kevin's. Of course, St. Kevin's did go on to win the premiership last year. But yeah, they Q really had no answers for St. Kevin's on the weekend. Um, really comprehensive performance from the usual suspects. We've got to talk about Sarah Cameron. Yeah. She keeps three goals. And then Bree Doyle, the captain, an extraordinary player over a really long period of time. Yeah. Um, and Emily Condon as well. They were both in the best. Yeah, I mean, well, they're, t- they're all three players that have been around St. Kevin's for a long time. Sarah Cameron um, spent some time in the VFLW yeah. last year, won the leading goal kicker yeah. as well. So it's great to see her back in the VAFA, I think, as yeah. we've spoken about. But to have the leading goal kicker of the best women's competition in the state just slot seamlessly back into your side definitely helps a lot but for Q they hadn't kicked one goal in this game against St Kevin's but that goal was kicked by Dakota Villava who is back this year after doing her ACL last year so it's really nice to see her back she was the competition best and fairest in 2022. Oh another year and then I think she's kicked a goal every game so far this season so good to see her continue that streak I'm keen to see how long that one lasts. Yeah, I love a goal a goal every game streak. Mm, same. But um, we'll have to wait and see. But she's a very consistent player, so I can yeah. imagine that she'll be uh, doing it every single week. West Brunswick, they got their first win of the year, which is oh. very exciting. Um, they also last year had a very fun – last year, last week, had a very mm. fun thing happen in that they won $50,000. 
I know. And not only, I mean, money's great, but you know what was extra cool? What? The person they got, the person who broke the news of this. I know. They had Mary Fowler, which is like the coolest thing ever. I don't think I need to explain who Mary Fowler is, but she's a, obviously absolute superstar of soccer, the sport we call soccer. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's in, in the Matildas set up and is one of the most, I think, notable soccer players in the entire world, in yeah. the women's space. Um, and, yeah, she got to present the grant to West Brunswick during the week. Which the was... look on their faces when she was unveiled oh on God. the um, Zoom that they I were mean, doing was so funny. I'd lose my mind. Yeah, same. She did kick two goals as well for Man City over the weekend. So oh. maybe she was inspired by, the, by West Brunswick. Inspired by, inspired by West She was inspired by West Brunswick. Taylor Watson and Ella Banfield did a lot to help the Pies win that one. But Premier... We've still got Old Scotch St. Kevin's and Q sitting up the top. So it's a bit at the same, 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 same old, same old. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. You're right. As we said before, those kind of really strong setups continue yeah. to, um, to kind of dominate in Prem A. But in Prem B, um, speaking of a club with a long history of success, um, Bo Morris, they were all defeated. They were un- they were lost on the weekend, is what I'm trying to say. They were beaten by some beads. I didn't see this one coming. No, Luke. either. I would thought it's a very even match up these two, but St. Beads they got over the line. Bella Geitzman with four goals, which is amazing. But I think Bo Morris they've come up from Division One yeah. into Prem B. They were undefeated all of last season, and then they lost the grand final. Oh, it's like nightmare fuel to to Marcelin. And I just think um, crazy that that yeah. happened to them. But and then to, but to not win the grand final and come up a division. Yeah. And they've had, and then, you know, finding a little bit tough. But, oh, I would yeah. be sad. I mean, maybe it was, maybe it needs to happen. Like in, um, as we said, they've come up from Div 1 to Prem B. Mm. It is very different competition. It's a very different competition. Um, I think, yeah, it was a bit of maybe. I hate saying it, but like a reality check in some mm. respects. Like you are kind of playing in a different league um, now. Uh, old Geelong, huge win, yeah. 109 points. You've got a, you got. I know. Like, shout I out. have to shout out my friend Jen, Jen Edney, who I've been friends with for about 12 years now. Sorry. Jen is a very athletic person, but she's never played football. Welcome, Jen. And she played her first seniors game on the weekend, oh. and she kicked a goal. So that's a very good – I love – well, she, you know, she grew up like me not being able to play football and now she's playing football for the first time and she got to play a little bit of a part in the old Geelong win. And from what I've heard around the traps from old Geelong is that she's – they're surprised by someone who's never played football. She's actually quite good. I love that. Yeah. I love when people are like, hang on, I'm actually really good at this game. Makes you wonder. We'll go off on our little tangents again. It makes you wonder what could happen if women had access to these mm. sort of sporting programs and pathways a lot earlier. I, my toxic trait is thinking that if I had the option, I would have played AFRW. That is toxic. <laughs> yeah, that's toxic. Um, but who knows? Who, who, we don't hey, know. But actually, who knows? Oh. So if you could have been playing AFRW. I actually I had a coach tell me that. Yeah, I knew um, it. I knew it. So thank you to that coach who inflated myself my self-worth and ego i'm still paying the cost of that today um favorites of the pod williamstown CYCs. oh my god the goal we've watched them the last year they were a bit up and down they were they yeah. couldn't find their consistency yeah. but when they, they were started, good when they're good they're good they're good yeah but they've started with three in a row which is amazing good on and um our girl alessia acquire two goals again man she's good she kicks goals like for fun like it's like shelling peas for her um so great work by Williamstown there three in a row with a consistency and shout out to Olivia McGee who was the rising star this week the Anytime Fitness rising star and Jamie Pay- Payton who uh they're both having really good seasons yeah I think yeah Williamstown CYC's one of those clubs they've kept that core together mm. now they're reaping the rewards in Prem B so good competition in Prem B we love to see them when they come up against Old Geelong. They're the two top of the ladder teams. Div 1, Old Zabs went back to back, which is another great story. Yeah, I think, you know, I mean, it was pretty close all game, but um, they kicked two goals to none in the yeah. last quarter, which was enough to kind of get them over the line. Um, Megan Gaffney, three goals, and Mel Clark, really important for the Zabs too, as well as she's in the first, I think. Yeah. Seeing teams win a game in the last quarter like that, it's always... It's a drama. 
reason. It's the drama, good for the confidence. Right. And I also I also think it's good for the for the grit of a team, knowing yeah, that you can dig it. in yeah. and win a game like that. Marcelin, they're in Div 1. We spoke about them before winning the Premiership last year. Yeah. Zoe Glascock kicked five goals in their win against Old Halebury. That is a bag by anyone's standard. Not a tough team, not an easy team to play. No. Old Halebury as well. So kicking five goals, a really good effort. And they're um, almost almost a top spot. That's called second place. Um, <laughs> Marcelin is second. Old Brighton sits above them in due to percentage, and that's probably because they had a 43-point win over Parkdale. Yes, they did. And I noticed looking at Old Brighton's best players, there's India and Jasmine Tate, um, and apologies to the third player. I can't remember her first name, but her last name is also Tate. And they're twins or triplets. So I'm wondering, twin, twins, triplet sisters. Twins plus one sisters. Or is it just three individuals with different, with different with the same last name? Are they like the, the kings at North Melbourne? So true. Who was it? Mia, Perry, Mia, Perry Emma. Emma King. Yeah. Okay, Emma King. So there is a precedent for this. It is. If you are from Old Brighton or you, you are, are one of the Tates, you're a Tate. can you let us know? Because I love hearing stories about I know. family and with, members playing together. If you are all sisters, we want to We want to talk to you on the podcast. To to you on the pod. Even if you're not sisters. Yeah. Like, is it annoying? I've got so many questions. Is it annoying on the whiteboard? Mm. Like, surname. Oh, shit. Have you ever gone to the wrong position? Because... Because you just see Tate. Because you see Tate and you're like, I don't play it half forward. Jay um, and I are very similar as well. Exactly. Anyway, anyway thank you. We'll solve the Tate we'll mystery. We'll solve the Tate mystery in the coming weeks. Um, moving <laughs> on to Div 2, Richmond Central's got their first win of the season over the MCC. Amber Price playing for the Hampton Rovers as well. Seven goals. Seven goals is insane. That's, that's, a, that's a good day at the office. Imagine kicking seven. It couldn't be me. It could be Amber. No. It was Amber. It was Amber Price. <laughs> that was in their win over St. Mary Salesian, Taylor Jones and Megan Miller. Um, also had four each. I know. Goal fest, 100%. I think if you got three players kicking more than four goals in a game, you'd like that's a good night at the pub afterwards. But also, when you kick four goals. Yeah. That's a pretty good day. Oh my god! I so when if I was the person who kicked four goals, <laughs> if I was Taylor or Megan and I'd kicked four goals, <laughs> and then my teammate kicked seven, I'd be yeah. like, "Can't you let me live? I'd be filthy. <laughs> let me have this moment, please. That's let so me have this moment." True. Um, but Glen Ira, they're still winning as well. Yeah. They had a really tough first quarter. It was very, very even, but they uh, overcame and they won. Alice Wolfenden and Zoe Rosita were the best for the Griffins. The Griffins. We love it. I was looking at the results and I thought, damn, not many close games this, this weekend. Yeah. We haven't had many thrillers, haven't had many close games. But then I got to Div 3 and I was not disappointed. Oh. D. Larcel had a one-point win over Box Hill North to remain undefeated. So there was a lot riding on this one for D. Larcel. Yeah. And to make matters worse, they kicked 2-9. For the day. You know when they say handy point? Handy point. That was a handy point. They that had nine handy points. Nine handy points. Yeah. And they had to come from behind at three quarter oh, time. Someone someone I saw challenges um oh, last week. It. It's so good, no spoilers. Um but absolutely one of my favourite sports movies. Um someone do it. <laughs> Not like the same vein of challenges, if you know, you know. But um, I'd love to see, I'd love to see a little doco on that sort of thing because the drama, the drama. This is why we love sport. Like you head a quarter at three quarter time, and then you kick. Yeah, you hold well, on. Five. I think they kicked four behinds as well in the, in the last quarter to win, and I bet they just are thinking, can someone, pl- one of them, please just go through the big sticks. Oh my God. Please. Why kick one goal when you can kick six? Behind? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can win it any in a different way. Uh, Madison Barnett and Poppy Palmer were integral for D La Salle. Poppy's had a good year. She's had a very good year. UHSVU, they're still on top of the ladder. Good for them. Um, and Terry Panola, we talk about someone kicking seven goals in a game. Yeah. The team came together to, to kick nine goals in the first quarter. That's mental. I, that's a lot of... I, that's a, in, a, in Vafa, in women's, 20 minutes, straight quarters. That's like goal, That's goal, almost goal. a goal every two minutes Those in one quarter. Op- the poor opposition defenders. I know, it just keeps Exhausted. coming. Exhausted. You're like, oh, sh- here we go again. Here we go again. Um, That's mental. And I think, didn't 
one player, I think one player, Ruby O'Halloran, she kicked six. She kicked six. If I was Ruby too, I'd be annoyed at Amber Price. I'd be like, I thought this was my oh week. Oh my God, it was my week. I kicked six. Oh my God, sorry, but Amber kicked seven. Amber kicked seven. Um, if you're not first, you're last. Sorry, girl. I know. Um, <laughs> rounding out, of course, our baffle competition with the Div 4. Um, the Collegian and St. Kevin's third still sit at the top of the ladder. Again, we talk about it every week, a testament to those really strong programs that the lists are strong enough and deep enough to pervade all the way through down to three teams. Um, Collegian's percentage did drop by 7,000 after the game, but they had like a percentage of like 7,300 or something. It was 8,000. It was 8,000. Oh my God. So, I mean, a percentage of 1,000 isn't. That's nothing to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But a percentage of eight thousand dropped by seven thousand this week. But uh, they still, they still sit on top, which is very good for collegians. As you said, just good to see these big clubs with a lot of teams and a lot of players finding some success. Yeah. But there's also a lot of standalones in there as well that we want to see. Yeah. I'd love to see the standalones. You know. Yeah. I um. As I said last week, I think the div. The Div 4 comp really intrigues me as a former Div 4 battler myself. <laughs> when someone think of the standalones, Lewis, got a quick question for you. Um, I know you don't want to talk about this week in footy, but um, I got to ask at half time are you a Powerade or a Gatorade or even a, a Maximus? Uh, a Maximus sort of operator. Ooh. 